Dear Black Girl, know that you are more than capable of achieving your goals and don't need external validation. God created you with purpose and without mistakes. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And anything you set your mind, intentions, and action to, you can achieve. Don't let the world or yourself cause you to doubt or think less of yourself. Go out with your head held high, being all of who you are, and pursue your heart's desires. Abundance is your birthright, and it's up to you to go after it. Do it scared if you have to. I'm rooting for you. Signed, Tasha Randall. Almost 12 years ago now, um, God had gave me the vision to start a coaching business. And I gave him every reason of why I was ready. Like, I'm too young. I don't have enough life under my belt. Who I'm going to I'm gonna coach somebody, et cetera, et cetera. And like, I literally like pushed it off and ran from it for so long. And it just like always would come back. I like always kept coming back in whatever situation. And I just kept like pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And then when I went through this space in my career where I was unfulfilled and, you know, felt overlooked, unheard, unseen, didn't like where my career conversations were going on what I was being pushed into, et cetera, and decided to take the time off. I was doing a lot of reflection and like basically coaching myself through like this process during the liberty of the three months that I had off. And I was also doing a lot of um, like spending a lot of time reading my word. And during that time, um, he had me end up reading, God had me reading the parable of the talents, which is basically the story of like three men that he gives these different bags of silver. He gives one man 10, another five and another one. The ones that he gave multiple, they basically took that, those bags of silver and multiplied them and came back with more. And he was like, well done, my good and faithful servant. The one guy who got the one bag basically went and buried it because he was so afraid of losing the silver that he was like, I'm just going to bury it and then come back and bring him this one bag back. And he was like, well, what did you do with what I gave you, the gift that I gave you? And he's like, you didn't actually put it to use. And so he was very displeased with that servant. And I had read this uh, parable of talents before, but this particular time, God convicted me in a new way. And he's like, are you the one burying your gift? And I was like, oh, dang, why you got to do me like that? <laughs> like, really? And he reminded me, like, remember when I told you, I need you to coach others. And you gave me every, like, and you've been burying this gift because I've always been naturally a coach where, like, friends, family, et cetera, come to me for advice when they need stuff, even at work. Like, I'm the person who, like, uh, uh, is coaching the new people coming in, like, helping, like, the people new to the company thrive and exceed. Like, it's just been a natural gift for me to where even my management has come to me and be like, what have you been doing? Like, how did they get off to such a strong start? And so it's just been like one of those things that has been ingrained. And he brought that to life to me again in that situation. He's like, the things that I'm having you go through right now that you're experiencing at work, like you are not the only one. Like I am having you go through this so you can help coach other women of color and help them get to the other side. The name Real Talk Tasha was an intentional choice for my business because it's a reminder to myself to always have real talk, straight up conversations and bring all of who I am authentically to whatever space that I show up in rather than wearing the mask. And so that's the genesis on how I started um, coaching and how Real Talk Tasha came to be. My legacy that I would like to leave is to be an example to others, to show up as your authentic self and know that you can still win, go after what you want with persistence and determination and don't give up. Like, I want to inspire others to be out here living their best life, to be out here thriving. Like I said earlier, I'm rooting for everybody Black. Like, we have been held down, held back for so long. Like, and there is just so many things that constantly happen that, you know, you already naturally deal with imposter syndrome and self-doubt. But then as a Black person in the, in America... Like there are so many signals and cues that you get that are constant reminders that make you start to even doubt yourself more. That it's like, we need so much more positivity in our community to like really help push past that. And that's my thing is where I want, I don't want it to be the space where people of color have to have so much of an extra burden and feel like that they have to alter who they are. Like I firmly believe that God made no mistake when he created us. And so like, if we are not living in our full authentic selves, 
we are doing God a disservice because we are not presenting ourselves as the work of art that he has created us to be, that we need to be in this world for his vision to fully be fulfilled and come to life. And so well, the legacy that I want to leave is helping people of color and particularly show up authentically and thrive in whatever spaces and places that they show up and just being a light that gives people hope that they can succeed when they show up as their authentic selves. A lot of people out here living life for other people because they're living life for their parents who have told them they should follow this track or they're living life for their followers or the people who their friends who are watching them because they're afraid to like do something different because they're like, well, what's so-and-so going to say if I do X, Y, and Z? I don't want to be, or I don't want to be out here falling on my face in front of so-and-so. And and so I'm just going to stick over here and where I'm most comfortable and what's working because I'm too afraid to fail in front of people or to put myself out there. And it's like, at that point, you're not really living your life for yourself. You're living your life for other people and being concerned about what they're going to say or what they're going to think. And that's really being held captive in your own life. My mantra is do it scared. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. The fear for me often is there, even when I'm doing stuff new, but I just push through and do it scared anyway. Because in my mind, I'm like, well, how do I know it won't work? Like, how do you know? Like, if it don't work, okay, what's the worst that can happen? Like, if you get out there and do it, okay, you pivot and do something different. Or, you know, you switch it up again, and that's okay. Like, there's a um, quote that basically says, like, um, it's essentially like, I won't fail as long as my determination to succeed is strong enough. Basically, like, you don't fail until you quit. Like, so if it don't work, okay, great. Try some different. Like, how many times did they attempt to build an airplane and how many failures did they have? But guess what? They kept trying something different and now, like, flying is a common thing. And it's like, would you rather live yourself, your life now in a space where you are unhappy because you're afraid to try something different? Or would you rather take that chance to go try something where you might fail, but you also have a chance of being happier than where you're at today?